Timberland video. And then they comments on my name. videos finally I'm gonna start building my j32 a3 um, it will be a turbo build at first I'm gonna go na just to get things you know settled um, and then I'll start bolting on all the fabricating all the piping for the turbo but this is my little gold nugget that I got here she painted gold very fresh I'm gonna uncover her for the first time in a couple months <laughs> Sorry, it's hot as hell out here. I live in uh, Tampa, Florida. So here we go. And there she is, you guys. Fresh as shit. So I went ahead, I re -cleaned, I cleaned up the pistons, obviously. I re-honed the cylinders. Um, I don't know if you could see that, but I re-honed them. Um, so they're, they're looking good. Um, I gotta take this flex plate off uh, because I will put my flywheel on obviously because this is this wasn't automatic um, and I, instead of a flex plate uh, manual cars get flywheels but here she is you guys I just want to give you give you a little rundown on her um, she had 27 23 or 27 thousand miles on her uh, when I got her so the rehoning of the cylinders wasn't really necessary uh, but I went ahead and did it anyways so you can see fresh as shit so there's a couple things i got to move over and everything but to get started i am going to do head gasket i'm going to put the heads on um head gasket heads on i'm leaving this oem um water pump on because it only has so low miles as you can see you guys i really didn't clean up this motor at all um i mean i cleaned it just to paint it but this is what it came like i mean it was very very clean um so I'm leaving the OEM pump even though I have a brand new one. Where the hell did it go? I have a brand new one over there under all the tools. Um, and that's it. You guys, I'm going to start making my videos a little shorter. If you have questions, let me know in the comments. But um, it's been taking a lot of time and I really got to start moving on this, on this motor swap. Um, plus I have this entire motor rebuild. So heads are going on. Um, obviously head gasket. I always copper spray. Ugh. I always use copper spray on all my gaskets guys and I've never had an issue whatsoever um, even after a hundred thousand plus miles um, spraying nitrous out the motor um, it never blew a head gasket or anything um, I might blow one this time I might left ahead but um, to avoid that ba -ba -ba, ARP head studs and guys I'm gonna put you in on a little secret um, there's not a lot of companies that offer um, J series head studs. Um, P2R does. Uh, you know what? I don't even want to mention them. I haven't had any good luck with them for some reason. Um, the guy that they work with that does the porting for them, he immediately. I, I just said I put a lot of work into it, and my my runners are less than P2R. And immediately on uh, J series nation or whatever on Facebook, he starts fucking bashing me immediately. He's like, "Oh, congratulations! You f you should feel proud. Your porters, your po uh, your runners are, are shiny." I'm like really bro like all i said is that they're less than fucking p2r um and then on top of that i had another issue with them when i was ordering the chrome molly um rings he acted uh one of the guys i'm not gonna name names that he acted like i was putting words in his mouth and he started screenshotting like my messages i'm like bro you fucking serious so i went back i screenshotted his and i'm like what does it say right there that's a fucking timeline you gave me and i was dude i was literally ripping i was tearing out my transmission to put these synchros in um, I, I was like, I had a good amount of work done. I had like four to five hours done. And I, I asked him, I'm like, where are the fucking, where are the chrome molly rings? And he's like, oh, I never said that, blah, blah, blah. I thought you were um, talking about some other part that even though I never mentioned in, in ever. Um, so I was like, you know what, fuck it. I was like, no hard feelings, just give me my money back. And he kept going ranting on and on. I'm like, bro, listen, no hard feelings. Don't explain anything else. Just give me my fucking money back. And they did. He refunded my money. So it's all good there. And then it was just funny that, you know, I posted my runners on Facebook, J Series Nation. And he, uh, the guy that actually does the porting, it's like JSR or some shit like that. Anyways, he, he starts bashing my fucking, he starts bashing my runners because I said they cost less than P2R. 
obviously because he's the one that makes those P2R runners. Um, it's just, I don't know, man. They All of them like, left a bad taste in my mouth. Um, it, it's, it's just sketchy. I, and I wish, I, I was hoping that it would be a good relationship because I know other people that have good relationships with them. Um, but for whatever reason, every single instance that I, I had dealing with that company, uh, it, it went to shit pretty quick. Even with the people that they associate themselves with example the runners but anyways guys um that's enough ranting about that so i got arp head studs the uh what i wanted to say the little tip is that um you don't have to pay a fucking arm and a leg from those guys you simply buy them break the box open and separate them get h22 or h23 you'll have to buy two sets so instead of the 310 or 20 dollars that they want plus shipping um, you can buy, I bought these for $260 and I'll have extra head studs too, because obviously, um, that's for a four cylinder and a four cylinder. Obviously we have a six that's going to leave a couple extra head studs. Um, so that's what I wanted to give you guys on, you know, a little heads up. So if you want to start, if you want to get, um, head studs and you don't want to pay an arm and a leg or that 50 60 dollars extra to the companies that are simply breaking the boxes open and then putting them back together and shipping them to you go this route um like i said h22 h23 i'm pretty sure k series will work also don't quote me on that i would need to i would need to get them in front of me and then run the specs um but that's an option for you guys it's just a little more affordable just trying to help you guys out um and also just just be cautious who you uh who you work with you guys um in my case i've learned my lesson plenty of times which is why i do all my work together all right anyways let's get started on this you guys always check always check your parts always check them you want to match up everything you want to make sure the water jackets go with the water jackets or whatnot um Bolt, 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 water jackets, bolt, bolt, bolt. Uh, in a couple other videos I've mentioned it, you want to use the blue shop towels because they're, they're lint free when assembling and like wiping down your motor. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some carb cleaner, uh, spray it onto here. I'm going to wipe down the cylinders, uh, cylinder bore one more time. Obviously I'm going to come over, I'm going to, this is nice and smooth, I've actually sanded it. Um, like if you you have little marks or it little, if it looks a little discolored like that, don't worry about it. Just run your fingernail over it and make sure that it, it's you don't feel anything. As long as it's smooth, you're fine. It can be a little discolored and stuff like that. Um, not a big issue. You just want it to be a smooth surface. So go ahead, uh, use your blue shop towel, some carb cleaner, wipe them down. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna rotate the motor over and I'm gonna start wiping down all the cylinders before I put my heads on. And then with the heads, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna tip them up. I'm gonna spray down the uh, combustion chamber in the bottom side uh, before I ever put them on. Um, and even before that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wipe it down and then I'm gonna put the uh, ARP head studs on. Once you have the cylinders cleaned out, at least to where you think, um, I always just take a little uh, oil. Um, I believe it's actually 1040 in here, just because I reused the bottle. Just spray a little bit on here, and you want to wipe down the uh, the cylinder walls. And this will help ensure if the motor is going to sit for a little while, it'll help ensure um, it doesn't freeze up or nothing. The rings don't stick to the walls or anything like that. Um, you just want to make sure they don't rust or anything. So that's what I do, and you don't have to worry, it's not going to burn, it, it, if you get a little bit of smoke, it's not going to be much, um, it'll just be like on the initial startup, and that should go away pretty, pretty freaking soon. That's it guys, I'm going to spray a little more, alright, and then uh, get started on the head studs. Um, and actually, I'm going to spray the gaskets too, the gaskets pretty pretty easy, but I'll, I'll show you when I'm done with them, what they should look like. All right. You go through, uh, make sure all the water jackets line up, everything lines up, bolt holes line up. Um, same here, everything lines up. 
All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take them over. I'm gonna spray the head gasket. All right, here's the uh, product I use. It's a copper spray, a gasket by Permatex. As anything else, man, as painting, uh, you wanna do a light first coat, um, which would be the tack coat, and then uh, go through, and I do two more coats, so a total of three. Um, obviously, the, the two following coats would be a little heavier. Um, not super heavy, you don't want them dripping or anything, but you wanna make sure you get a, a nice, clean coat um the reason i use this it's it's a personal preference as many things um i've always had great success never had any issues with gaskets failing um even when you using aftermarket gaskets where people are like oh they suck and i'm like eh i mean i'll use it so anyways um i use it i've used just about every type of gasket and had great success with this um what it does it fills in all the small imperfections and crevices um, that a normal gasket would not pick up. So if you do miss a spot on the mating surface, for whatever reason, um, the copper spray will form around it and seal. Um, like I said, man, you guys, I, I love it and this is what I use. So um, just light coats and let's get going. All right guys, once you're done with the bottle, um, always turn it upside down and spray it out because it will freaking uh, gum up or whatever the fuck you want to call it, it'll clog. Um, all right, to get you guys a good shot of what these look like or what they should look like, I don't know how well you guys can see this. Let's see here, there you go. Copper, ah, damn it, copper, damn it. Anyways, copper. Um, it should be fully coated a nice gloss look to it not runny um, let it sit for a couple minutes to become tacky um, once it's tacky that's when I put it on um, because that tackiness will obviously stick to the imperfections a little better um, not long guys just a couple minutes all right let's get going all right here's the ARP head studs um, here's just a bunch of notes or installations instructions for them uh, great thing about this is they can be torqued down to 90 foot pounds where I forgot what the heads are I, I know it's up there but I don't know if it's 90 foot pounds the more torquing strength you can put on those heads the better that means the more boost you can put to them without literally lifting the heads um, from all the added boost and the combustion or whatnot all right guys sorry bear with me here so here's the assembly lube um, obviously you put the assembly lube on the uh, on the bolts as they go in um, put them on the nuts I already opened these obviously um, there is with these H22 for some reason there is one bolt that is way longer than the rest um, obviously don't discard it but just put it to the side because you won't be using that one now um, with these there's gonna be a bigger end like a bevel I don't know if you can see that where it's flared that flared end is gonna go on the block side because that is where it will stop so you put it down or you install it you just um torque them down hand tie it so just hand tie it but you can put an allen key on the end of it and then like i said once it bottoms out that's it don't don't tighten them really hard just hand tight that's all they need that's the great thing about head bolts all right guys let's do this
Okay, so what was happening there at the end, um, one of the alignment dowels was off-centered and a little bent. So I just had to kind of force it back and then uh, it just sat there. So I would say take a, uh, a soft mallet and just hammer it down a little bit and boom, there you go. Nice and flush, perfect. No harm, no foul, here we go. All right guys, this is where the um, having a manual really comes in handy. Um, you live and you die by it it will help you with different torque sequences um which is the biggest thing that i use it for um and it, there's also different procedures um on certain things that you have to go in that order or you kind of get screwed up so in this case here are here is the torque sequence it's going to go one two three uh four five six seven eight and then in this case also I don't know if you guys can see it. Cylinder head bolts uh, in sequence. There's gonna be step one, two, and three. Step one is 29 foot pounds. Step two is 51. Step three is 72. And then being that the ARP head studs um, state that you need to go into the manufacturer sequence and then to 90, 90 foot pounds, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go 29, 51, uh, 72, and then 90. So that's, that's what I'm going to do now, torque it in that sequence um, and those steps also. All right, guys. Uh, next up, you want to set the timing. Obviously, you need to put your uh, timing belt on. And I've already I went in depth with this on how to do it in my head and cam install video a couple of videos back. Um, it's a very in depth. I know it's a very long. It's a long video, but it's very detailed and in depth on how to install cam, set timing, valve lash, all that. Um, so if you guys need any help there, go back and uh, watch that video. But here. You're gonna, first you're gonna wanna get the crank to where it wants. So you're gonna align the, uh, that pin or the, I always forgot what it's called, that key, there you go. You wanna align the key with that arrow. I don't know if you guys can see that. So there's a little arrow right there. That's the arrow. You wanna align the key with the arrow and that looks good to me. And then next, <clears throat> on the uh, rear head so the front head is always gonna have the numbers okay so if you ever rebuild your your heads and can't remember which pulley goes to what the front head always has the uh, numbers on it so the front head you're gonna want to get number one to that mark right there on the uh, cam pulley guard um, all right so you got number one you got six five blah 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 all these other numbers are for when you're setting valve lash and I'll once again I went through that detailed um, in my past video but here I just want number one I want it lined up with that it's pretty close but I'm gonna spin it just a little more to get it back and then here you're gonna get that line right there lined up with that mark on there so let's go ahead and do that and then you basically do that and you put the uh, you put the 
<clears throat> timing belt on and you guys uh a trick that once again i reviewed in my last video i never mess with the tensioner so what i do i actually loosen up the idler pulley here and once you have it loosened just enough it'll wiggle a little bit and you can actually slide the uh timing belt off guys i have set so many different vehicles i've i've helped so many different friends out setting timing where they were they were fighting it for literally days where it would jump back the uh the pulley would jump and skip and it would throw throw the timing out of whack i literally went over to their houses and i would spend not even five minutes i would do exactly the procedure i'm doing here uh line them up line it out line it up put it on Put the uh, belt on and then just tighten it down and it's good to go. It, it automatically, once this gets tightened up, it pulls it pulls the, uh, the pulley up and then it tightens it. And you never have to mess with this. You don't have to take the stock battery tie out and fuck with that. Dude, I've never done that. First off. Second, I don't even have the damn battery tie so I, I wouldn't do it anyways. But that's the trick. Um, let's go ahead and get this done. Alright guys, he, hate to keep repeating myself but... Uh, I reviewed it in my last video on the cam install, cam head install, valve lash, uh, whatever. Um, you want to make sure you have tension all the way up through this side around because all your slack will be here at the idler pulley. Where I think it's backwards um, if you go by the manual. I think they say tension all the way through here and then there will be, right here would be loose at the uh, tensioner obviously because the tensioner would take up that slack. With, with my procedure, you go completely opposite. You want all the slack on this side. All right, and then something else that I do that nobody will ever teach you, I usually go back. So instead of lining up completely, I usually go back about a half a tooth or a full tooth. What that does is it allows me, because these, these never line up properly when going from the crankshaft to the first cam pulley. So I, I level this out. So um, the timing marks on the uh, crank pulley are perfect you set that dead center um, but on here you go back about a half a tooth to one tooth because what that does you always end up with a little slack there so once you roll it on then you can move it back and it will take up the slack from there and then you'll be dead on and you'll be dead on again because trying to pull all that slack from here up to there without moving this is a pain in the ass you guys so like I said you, you want to go back about a half a tooth to a full tooth run it up and then there'll be a little bit of slack and what you can do just rotate that pulley just till it's there and the slack it shouldn't affect this because you've got to remember there's slack there so that's not going to get pulled all it's going to do is take that slack up and then you have tight all the way around back to here uh, that's shit that you guys will not learn i'm 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 fucking teaching you for free there you guys um you know other other people in other companies would not give you that information but i i, I want to help you guys out it's a good tip that i learned along the way through a lot of headaches and shit so hopefully it comes in handy for you guys and as i figured this is a brand new belt that shit was tight to get on there so what i did i slightly rotated this one forward this one forward just to give it more slack over here uh barely affected the crank but then what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna spin it back to um the marks and everything should line back up this will go that way this will go that way this will go all that way with the belt um and once that's done you guys you want to turn the motor over you know three or four times come back and check your timing marks to make sure that they're still on all right guys what happened there um being that the belt is so tight uh that procedure my procedure works perfect with you know um for whatever reason if you're like doing uh, modifications or you're reusing the belt it works flawlessly um it still works really really well um my procedure you just have to i i didn't realize that most basically all of them have to be turned about one um about one tooth back so this will go one tooth back this will go one tooth back but the crank actually goes one tooth forward and the reason it does that and remember what i said before it takes up the slack so when you go forward and then you spin it back this way spin it back this way what it's doing it's pulling this back tight but it's also realigning your mark same with this you can see there i went back about a half a tooth and then spun it back forward take up that slack and then same here i went back because i did that to that i had to do that to that 
Um, so I spun this back a little bit and ran that on, got that on, good to go. Yeah, I don't like where that lined up right there. Um, let's see what happens when I spin it over. I don't know if you guys can hear the compression coming out of the holes. It's awesome. Woo! Yeah, I know you heard that one. All right, let's get these marks relined. All right, we got the key back on. Uh, that's on. That's on. Guys, my timing is set. We are good. So after you set timing, then you can go to your valve lash or your valve clearance. Um, once again, I already reviewed that in my last video, um, so I'm not going to do that now, um, but I do need to get to that, so let's get to work. Lash. So for the valve lash or valve adjustment, whatever you want to call it, uh, for the intake side, your limits are going to be 20 hundredths or 22 hundredths. Um, so, or 0.2 to 0.22 millimeter, I'm sorry. Um, in this case, the one I'm going to adjust with is going to be my uh, 20, so it's 0 0.203, obviously 0 0.20, so that's a 20. Now, I do the go no-go method, which once again, I reviewed in uh, my other video, cam, head, uh, valve adjustment install. Um, but just a quick review, this is a 22.9, I don't know if you can see it, where the hell is it? This is a 22.9, so... 20 to 22 okay so the 22 9 is basically a 23 so i'm going to use the 20 to to do the adjustment and then i'm going to use the 22 9 or the 23 whatever you want to call it as long as that doesn't go through and this other one does then you know your valves are within spec same thing applies to the exhaust side um ugh. exhaust side uh your limits are 28 to 32 um, I have a 305, which is a 30. Um, so it's right in between the 28 and 32. I'm going to go 30. And then the no-go I have is a 33. So again, the outside limit or the high limit of the exhaust side is 32. I'm going to go 33 as my no-go. Um, that's it, you guys. And also, it's a hell of a lot easier, especially if you're doing this on the car. This will probably be the easiest valve adjustment I've ever done because obviously I have full access around the entire motor um but if you don't and you have to do this in the car like i've done probably five six seven times um get the angled uh tool whatever the feeler uh get the angle tool um it, it's a hell of a lot easier than the uh than the flat ones because these obviously you can go in at an angle and then they're also flexible so you can so you can flex them but it's a hell of a lot easier to go in at an angle. Imagine if that was straight. I mean, it's like, it's it's a pain in the ass. But if it's angled, perfect. All right, guys, once again, let's get going. All right, and one more quick note. Um, say this is the front of the car. You're looking at the front of the car into the windshield. Um, this is gonna be the pulley side. So this will be the front cylinder head. This will be the rear head, okay? Um, your cylinder numbers is gonna go like this one two three four five six so again one two three four five six um pulleys are on this side driver side is that side passenger side is this side pulleys rear head one two three four five six um just like you're reading from left to right so you start with the back first away one two three four five six and that's how you're going to do your adjustments you're going to line up one you're going to set your timing to top dead center, TDC, 
one, aligned, aligned. That's gonna be your number one. Once again, here's number one. Then you spin it, you rotate it, and it would, next one up will be number four. One, two, three, four. One, four, two, five, three, six. And that's how it all goes. That's how it's it goes on here. So you're gonna go boom, 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 boom. All right, um, and for some reason, yeah, that's the firing order, by the way. Um, one, four, two, five, three, six is the firing order. All right, guys. Um, I got my timing set and I got the valve adjustment or valve lash completely done. I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap the video up here. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe if you know anybody that likes the content or um, if you feel like sharing, uh, please be my guest. Uh, I try to provide the most helpful informational videos that I can showing you guys what I do, what I love to do uh, with these J-Series motors. Um, anyways.